The opposition leader in Uganda's parliament says his members will continue their boycott of the legislature until their demands are addressed. Matthias Mpuga says they include government accountability for missing persons and the detention of people for long periods without trial. Ugandan government officials were not immediately available to comment. Mpuga brushed aside concern that by boycotting parliament, the opposition is failing to do the people's business. He tells me that most Ugandans support the boycott. Since the 2020 elections, we have been demanding from government to come and explain the fate of 18 missing citizens that were arrested by government security agencies. They have never been taken to court. And up to now, they are not accounted for. So we demanded for accountability of these citizens. Secondly, we have several cases of Uganda detained for more than three years in various detention centers without a trial against the spirit and letter of the Constitution. So we are demanding from the Ministry of Justice to come and explain whether they have written a new Constitution that allows them to detain people without trial for longer periods of time than the Constitution allows. Thirdly, we demanded for an explanation for trying civilians in the court martial. The Constitution of Uganda does not permit the trial of civilians in the military courts. Then lastly, we are demanding for a from government on the shrinking space, on the freedom of assembly, media freedom, freedom of association, civil society is stifled, and we are waiting for government to respond. And that's the long and short of the basis and genesis of our boycott of parliament. But uh, Honorable Upuga, I mean, without downplaying the demands that you are making, what do you say to some Ugandans who are saying you were elected to do the people's business in parliament and by boycotting, you are not doing the people's business, for example, passing budgets and, and all that? My brother James, when the time comes, we shall do that. But look here, what would be the essence of passing laws in parliament, of passing budgets, no matter the figures in the budget? when the supposed beneficiaries are being hunted by the same government that is passing the budget? What would be the essence of us passing laws that are not respected? What would be the essence of, of passing several legislations when the beneficiaries are not respected? So first things first. In fact, what we are doing has popular support in Uganda, and the people of Uganda are with us on this. Why don't you pass it on to the Uganda Human Rights Commission? I'm sure they are capable of... Uh following up on these demands you are making? The grabbing of power in Uganda did not spare any institution, which is why, by standing up to the executive through parliament, we are trying to return power to the people. The Uganda Human Rights Commission, which is a constitutional body, is toothless. In fact, if you follow some of the statements issued by uh, the commission, they're actually very, very disturbing. First of all, of the case of missing persons, they issued a statement two weeks ago is the effect that the families of these missing persons claimed that they are not interested in them pursuing the fate of their people, which was a lie. Secondly, they even turned around to say that some of these people are non-existent. They've never existed. So the commission, with due respect, is useless and toothless. It is part of the extension of the regime, unfortunately. Honorable, before I let you go, what do you see as the end to this tunnel? If there are people in this government that are reasonable, we expect them to come out and offer a framework of responding to these issues one by one. For instance, how can citizens be missing for more than two years? And there is no proper investigation by the police or any other agency. So we expect that something will be done about the missing persons. Honorable Mpuga, thank you so much again. A pleasure to speak with you. Thank you, James. The Honorable Matthias Mpuga is the opposition leader in Uganda's parliament. He was speaking with us from the capital, Kampala. Uganda is facing a backlash following a tough new anti-homosexuality law passed earlier this year. Last week, ahead of the 20th AGOA Forum in South Africa, President Biden revealed plans to expel Uganda, Gabon, Niger, and the Central African Republic. In August, the World Bank announced it was suspending new loans to Uganda following the anti-homosexuality bill, while last month, the U.S. State Department warned about the risk of doing business there. 
Although Ugandan President Yoweri Museveni has urged Ugandans not to be over-concerned, Ugandan analyst Charles Mwenguya Mpagi tells viewers Douglas Mpuga that uh, there are mixed feelings in the country about these actions. What we have been hearing is that uh, government is engaging, for example, with the World Bank to try and review its position on uh, stopping lending to the government of Uganda. The latest developments around uh, the travel the advisory to the business community and, of course, the most recent one, which is uh, striking Uganda off the African Growth and Opportunity Act, has attracted a pretty mixed reaction. One is to look at the, the, the long-term consequences of uh, that Anti-Homosexuality Act that Parliament of Uganda passed uh, earlier this year. The second is to evaluate how Uganda has performed under Goa itself. If you compare how many products that are allowed to the U.S. market under Goa and how many products Uganda has exported, how much revenue it's been able to generate out of that exportation in comparison with other African countries, Uganda has performed fairly poorly. Therefore, that has uh, raised questions about how did Uganda manage that ago opportunity? How did Uganda think through the Anti-Homosexuality Act and its broader impact? That debate is still going on, though officially from government circles, they speak with a lot of um, bravado, if you can call it that, uh, or confidence that these bumps are emerging out of that law, which the government thinks they'll be able to overcome with time. There is a case in court uh, against that Anti-Homosexuality Act. Do you think this pressure might impact the outcome of that court case? Ugandan courts have uh, tended to exhibit a level of independence. So it's difficult to assess exactly how this pressure will influence the decision of the court. Of course, when you're talking about the Anti-Homosexuality Act, you need to look back uh, to the earlier act that had been passed and was struck down by court, or on a technicality largely, that it was passed without South Africa's transport minister said on Tuesday that she had been robbed near Johannesburg in bizarre attack on the car in which she was traveling. On Monday, Minister Sindisiwe Chikunga was driving along a major artery on the outskirts of the economic capital. According to the Ministry of Transport, the car was suddenly forced to a halt after driving over spikes that were probably deliberately placed in its path. This immobilized the car and allowed the criminals to steal valuables, the administration said in a statement. The minister's bodyguards then got out of the vehicle to change the tires when three armed and well-dressed men, their faces hidden under bala- balaclavas apparelled, Mrs. Chikunga told a parliamentary meeting. They opened my door, put a gun to my head, and ordered me out, she said, describing the experience as traumatic and devastating. The men demanded money, continued the minister, adding that she only had the equivalent of 10 euros on her person. Mrs. Chikunga also said that her laptop and phone had been taken. According to a police statement, the bodyguards were robbed of their weapons, personal effects, and two firearms were stolen. A manhunt has been launched and an investigation launched into the armed robbery.